In this video, we're going to look at some practice problems where we compare the intermolecular forces of different molecules. So here's the first problem. It tells us to list the IMFs acting on two phosphorus trichloride molecules. If you're asking yourself why it says two molecules, remember that intermolecular forces means the forces between the molecules. So you have to have at least two molecules to have intermolecular forces. So here are the steps we're going to follow. First thing that we need to do is figure out the formula. Remember now I expect you to know the nomenclature, so you're going to figure out the formula or formulas of the compounds in the problem. Then we're going to draw a Lewis structure. We're going to figure out that molecular geometry or the shape, and then we're going to decide which intermolecular forces it has. So let's try this problem. It's just right up there at the top of the page so that you can see me go through the steps. All right, so hopefully you recognize that phosphorus trichloride is PCl3, so one phosphorus and three chlorines. And so when we go to draw the, the Lewis structure, we need to first add up all the valence electrons. We have one phosphorus that has five valence electrons, and then we have three chlorines and they each have seven, which gives us a total of 21. And if you add that together, we have a total of 26 valence electrons. Let's go ahead and draw our Lewis structure. We've got P, and then we're gonna attach three chlorines. Now we've used two, four, six in the bonds. That leaves us with 20 electrons. And then we need to give each of the outside atoms a full octet. There are two here, so two, four, six more on each of the chlorines to give those chlorine atoms a full octet. And so if we total those up, three chlorine atoms, then they each need six valence electrons. That leaves us with 18 electrons. Sorry about that. And then we still have two electrons left. Remember that when we have electrons left over, we put them on the central atom, and then we subtract, so we have used all of our electrons. Remember to do that last step where you check. Each of the outside atoms has a full octet. My central has, uh, atom has a full octet. So now that's our Lewis structure, so now we th need to think about our shape. Remember to think in terms of shared and unshared pairs. So hopefully you're looking and saying, okay, PCL3, this has three shared and one unshared pair. And if you remember that that shape is that trigonal pyramidal. The trigonal pyramidal shape. And you'll need to give me all of this to justify your answer. So when you have a problem on a test, I want to see the Lewis structure, the shape, and then we're going to talk about which intermolecular forces it has. You want to ask yourself about all three. So there are LDFs, there are dipole-dipole, and there's hydrogen bonding. Okay. So first of all, does it have LDFs? Hopefully your mind is telling you yes. Every atom has, every molecule has LDFs because they all have electrons. Anything with electrons has LDFs. The next one we need to ask about is dipole-dipole. Remember that you know dipole-dipole because of the two shapes, bent, trigonal, pyramidal, or a regular shape, the other shapes that have different atoms around the outside. This is one of our shapes that has dipole-dipole, so we would also say this is polar. And then the last one you want to ask yourself about is hydrogen bonding. Now, I think it is pretty easy to look at this and say, yeah, there's no hydrogen bonding there because there's no hydrogen. So you want to just make sure you ask that question. So these would be the intermolecular forces, and this is how we get to that point. Let's try another one. Okay, let's take a look at this problem. Explain why ammonia that has a boiling point of negative 33.4 degrees C has a higher boiling point than phosphine, which is pH 3, and has a boiling point of negative 87.8 degrees C. Justify your answer. So let me show you what I'll expect you to do. I'll want you to show me the formula for ammonia. 
draw the Lewis structures for both ammonia and for phosphine, figure out the molecular geometry for both compounds, and then you have to figure out the intermolecular forces between the, that each of the compounds has. Then you have to compare those two compounds to get the answer. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's tackle this problem. Hopefully you remember that the formula for ammonia is NH3, so we're going to have to figure out the everything for ammonia, and then the formula for pH3 I've given you in the problem uh, for phosphine. So let's go ahead and work out the Lewis structures. One nitrogen has five valence electrons, that gives me a total of five. One hydro sorry, three hydrogens have one each, and that gives me a total, a grand total of eight for ammonia. And then for phosphine, you can see that it has the same number of valence electrons as uh, ammonia does. So you may wonder, okay, what's going on here? Let me put a three there. That's one electron, and that gives me a total of eight there also. So let's draw those Lewis structures now. So here I've used six electrons in the bonds, two left. Those go on my central atom. Do not forget the check step. So I've used all my electrons. Each of my outside atoms, my hydrogen, has a full you know, octet, not exactly eight, but for hydrogen, the bond is enough. And then nitrogen has a full octet because it has three uh, pairs of electrons in the bonds and one unshared pair. Phosphine looks remarkably similar. So same thing here, six in the bonds, two left. I'm gonna put two on the phosphorus and none there. So let's go ahead and look at our intermolecular forces and see if we can understand what's going on here. All right, so first thing we need to do is figure out our shapes. Remember this has three shared pairs, one unshared pair, so that's trigonal pyramidal. And you can see that phosphine is the same thing. So at this point, they are very similar, and so we have nothing that is different. So there must be a difference in those intermolecular forces. So hopefully you realize that both of these have LDFs because they all have electrons. And then the next thing to think about is dipole-dipole. They do have dipole-dipole because trigonal pyramidal is one of our shapes that always has dipole-dipole. Now, hydrogen bonding. Remember that hydrogen bonding doesn't just mean that there's hydrogen in the compound. It means that there's hydrogen in the compound and the hydrogen is bonded to either fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. Phosphine does not have hydrogen bonding, ammonia does. And remember that hydrogen bonding is the strongest of all of the different intermolecular forces. So you want to say something like ammonia, okay. So you want to say something like ammonia has a higher boiling point than phosphine because while they both have LDFs and dipole-dipole intermolecular forces, ammonia also has hydrogen bonding, which is stronger than LDFs and dipole-dipoles. All right, let's try another one. Now, this one we need to probably work out together. Hexane, this is not something you see, it's an organic compound, and we don't really deal with that too much in this class but you want to think about what that might look like in terms of its structure. So it's a carbon chain compound, so it's gonna have six carbons hooked together, like so. And then it's got hydrogens, 14 of them, so we're just gonna hook those on there. And we don't really have an official Lewis structure for this, but this is what it would look like if we did. So you can see this thing's just covered with hydrogens. And hopefully you're recognizing what type of shape is around each of those carbon atoms. If you look, each of those carbon atoms has 
four shared pairs of electrons around it, which is a tetrahedral shape. So we know that this would have this would have uh, LDFs, but for the for the most part, that's all of the intermolecular forces that it has. And it's asking, will sodium chloride dissolve in hexane? Sodium chloride, remember that sodium chloride is ionic, and so we have to think about whether ionic compounds will dissolve in a compound that only has the LDFs. So let's think about that for a second. Okay, so we know that sodium chloride actually will not dissolve in hexane because hexane is not polar. And you might argue that these have carbons and hydrogens and that makes it a little bit different. But when you actually look at the electronegativities, they're not different enough to make those polar. And so the, it's not uh, polar enough to allow salt to dissolve in it. In fact, if you put it in there and mix it, it will just sit there. And so ionic compounds only dissolve in polar solvents, so like dissolves like. This is not a problem that you're likely to see on a test, something with hexane that you're not familiar with, but I did want you to understand that concept of ionic compounds only dissolving in polar things, polar compounds only dissolving in polar things, nonpolar only dissolving in nonpolar, just a reminder of that. All right, let's do one last example. You'll want to look at this because it's a little different than the other problem that we looked at with boiling point. Okay, so again, remember the first step is to figure out the formulas. Carbon tetrachloride is CCl4. Carbon tetrafluoride is CF4. Okay, pause the video. Do go through the steps, the Lewis structures, the shapes, the intermolecular forces, and then we'll talk about the explanation. So click this back on when you get there. All right, so we've got carbon tetrachloride. Okay, carbon tetrachloride has one carbon with four electrons and four chlorines with seven electrons each for a total of 32 electrons. And let's go ahead and just draw the, the shape for that, the Lewis structure. So there's carbon in the center with four chlorines on it. And we're gonna use up eight of our electrons in the bond, that leaves us with 24. And then we're going to give each of the outside atoms a full octet. Getting a little carried away with those dots there. All right. And let me just move that down a little bit. And then we've used 24 to give the outside atoms a full octet. So we've used all of our electrons. Each of our outside atoms has a full octet. Our central atom has a full octet. So that's the correct Lewis structure. And its shape with four shared pairs and no unshared pairs is tetrahedral. All right, so you should look at that and say, okay, this has LDFs because they all have LDFs because every molecule has electrons. This does not have dipole-dipole. Tetrahedral is not one of our shapes, and all of these atoms are the same. This does not have hydrogen bonding. The other compound is carbon tetrafluoride. So one carbon atom and four electrons. And then the, for the fluorine, there are four of those, and they have seven electrons. So again, very similar here, 32 electrons total. Put carbon in the middle. Put carbon in the middle. Put carbon in the middle. Draw the, attach the fluorines with single bonds.
we've used 8 and that leaves us with 24 and then we've got to put six valent more electrons on each of those fluorines. They have two in the bond, but they need six more to have a full octet. So when I've done that, I've got four atoms that each have six of the electrons. That's a total of 24. Now I've used all my electrons. Each of my outside atoms has a full octet. My central atom has a full octet. Do not forget that step. And then we can look at this and say four shared pairs, no unshared pairs. That's the tetrahedral shape. And it has LDFs because they all have LDFs. Dipole, dipole, no. Tetrahedral is not one of our shapes. Same atoms around the outside. And then uh, no hydrogen bonding for this because there's not even any hydrogen. But remember, hydrogen has to be bonded to fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen for that to set up for hydrogen bonds. So you're probably looking at this and wondering how we can have a difference. Now we know that um, carbon tetrachloride has the higher boiling point. So remember that we talked about when we looked at the fractionating column, the more electrons a compound has, the higher its boiling point because it has stronger intermolecular forces, stronger LDFs. And I know you're looking at this and saying, but wait, they have the same number of electrons. They both have 32. Well, remember, we're only counting valence electrons there. If you look on the periodic table, fluorine is above chlorine. Fluorine has fewer electrons. Chlorine has more total electrons. So we know that, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the pen color here and write down here in the white. So now we know that carbon tetrachloride and carbon tetrafluoride both only have LDFs. But because CCL4, carbon tetrachloride, has more electrons total than carbon tetrafluoride, it has stronger LDFs, which gives the carbon tetrachloride a higher boiling point. And you'll need to give me that explanation. This is a complete answer for that problem. So again, Lewis structure, shape, intermolecular forces and just the little justification, the, a sentence or two explaining. If you have questions or you need some more help on these, come and see me in class.